everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Lorena, Lorena Creole, and I am here with Retro Nerd Girl. Hi and guys. I was cut off when she says hi guys. Shame on me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, well, I'm glad you're here, my dear, because we're back and oh, man. doing yet another, uh, I don't know, deep dive, breakdown, review of episode seven of season three of The Mandalorian, an episode titled The Spies, I believe, is it? Yes, it? yes, Yay! The Spies. Yeah. Yes. This was... Um, this was a very interesting um, episode. I will say off the bat, and 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 I got I got to get this out. Can everybody please stop ripping off a of Blade Runner? <laughs> please. I mean, I know Blade Runner is Blade Runner, and it should stay there. Um, yeah. This is just it's just too it's too close. And for you kids, you don't know what Blade Runner is. Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. It's I don't see Star Wars when I see when I see this. So that's kind of like the one thing that kind of mm -hmm. stuck out to me when it, you know, when I saw it. Um, what did you yes, think? When well, you well it? said. Thank you. Um, I do love um, the Blade Runner world, and um, I don't I don't mind seeing other versions like it, but it, it is a little tiring to keep seeing the the same images it's almost as if um the de definitive thing that used to be star wars is now getting every other franchise that was that's uh sci-fi and mm -hmm. blending it into it like aliens oh everybody logan's run come on in you know mm -hmm. it's, it's all being amalgamated to star wars so kids that are growing up now this could be their first time seeing this kind of visual and thinking this is where it all began and they'd be sorely um wrong uh so i it, it i like i said i don't mind seeing it it's just um it is pretty much an overused kind of thing now, if you look mm -hmm. at a movie like the fifth element they did have a lot of the same elements of these big buildings and uh flying cars but it was the coloring was different, mm -hmm. right? It was brighter and 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 it had a a, a different um, look to it. Um, so I I think they did not even try to change things up uh, elementally to even look different than Blade Runner. I agree, agree, especially if you go back to Revenge of the Sith mm -hmm. and the CD side of Coruscant where that like I love that theater scene just when you see how seedy it is and it's like <laughs> this isn't the Coruscant this isn't the prim and proper part of Coruscant that we're used to seeing and I didn't really think anything of Blade Runner when I saw that because of yeah. how they had it set up so I would have loved and I really think that's a missed opportunity to revisit that part the underworld of um of Coruscant that would have mm -hmm. been really great to uh, put yeah. here instead of Instead of this, so th this kind of already rubbed me, you know, the wrong. The wrong. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! They're starting off wrong. <laughs> they're start, yeah, they're start, starting off wrong. It's kind of just like really. No, I, I'm, I'm a sci-fi freakazoid, so I guess I this was I still ate it up, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's fine. It's I was just kind of I like still, yeah, I still ate it up with the music and the 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 two thousand early two thousands club blade uh 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 music. Yeah. I was like I was like, yeah, where the where's the club at? Um, you know, looking for that uh shiny black leather and those, <laughs> those glasses. And the, yeah, and the glasses and the blades, yeah. Like and the, even, the matrix. Yeah. I and, get you. Uh, I get you. It, it, it was this scene itself doesn't make a, any sense at all to me um, because it, at dark back alleyways on Coruscant, mm -hmm. you may find an Imperial uh, droid just hanging out, waiting, waiting in the shadows. Why? Yeah. What is it doing there? 
and and it's not really an imperial droid this size it's not really known for its stealth so mm -hmm. to speak it's a huge um, one that's huge it's loud it's noisy um go back and watch the empire strikes back kids i mean they're very easy to pick yeah. up and yet this thing is just hanging out it's i would i would give it more credit if it was something that was more compact like a stealth uh like one of those stealth droids are really small. Mm -hmm. um, I would go for that. But this, yeah, I agree with you, Retro Nerd Girl. This seems very out of place. It, me. Yeah. I mean, I, I like the purpose for it, you know, to have that, that, that conversation she's about to have. But I mm -hmm. don't, I don't uh, feel as if this is the, the necessarily the, um, the correct way about doing it um, artistically. And, um, Logistically, it doesn't make sense. Uh, why, you know, um, the new republic um, deserves to fall in, in a fiery blaze. The way they have been conducting things, you you mean in your own alleyways that these guys are just hanging out there, and and they can conduct business. Like, I mean, this is uh, highly. Um, I don't know if it's unlikely, but it's just, it just makes me angry uh, um, to see them sort of portray the, the new Republic this way. It's too sloppy. I can see a few sloppy moments, but it, it's just um, a little bit much. But anyway, uh, <laughs> we're going to, we're just going to dissect this one scene. Forget about the rest. But, but you were 100%, 100% um, right. There's two things that I didn't like about this particular scene. One is big ass Imperial pro droid out there Pops in an alleyway the doing a full face scan or something like that. I mean, not like, yeah, I'm going to have to rewrite this for you. Not like some little tiny secret droid that comes up and scans your iris that's very you know very sneaky but not this big huge big huge clunky thing and then as soon as you go you know eh, okay we figure out who you are boom we see a hologram of a uh, moff gideon yeah like hey okay granted i will say yes i like moff gideon i'm a moff gideon fan girl um happy to see him but i just felt like this was too I don't know, like too rushed. This is the reveal that you do. I would have rather have seen kind of like a flashback of what happened for him to escape. So yes, this this is part of this conversation that she's having and some, some other things that are ha going to happen in the story. I think could have easily been spread out throughout the story. Mm -hmm. Um back to like episode two, three, all, all of that. Because at this time, uh, they're trying to pull all the strings together. And I think they, they managed to do that. They managed to answer a lot of questions in, in just this one scene here. But it, it, it also, um, a, a lot of people have left the show, stopped watching the show because this is come so late in the season to get this information to get this moment um and um but there there is a lot of good juicy stuff in this scene it's just um yeah it, it you have to be a diehard to to wait for this and or you know doing a, a talk show like you are doing you know to to kind of like okay people uh, are gonna you know they want this uh want to know about this and want to talk about this episode but uh otherwise a lot of people have left this the show and are not coming back to star wars yeah. in, in, in general yeah. um and um it, it's pretty sad uh to see because they it looks like they're working on something but it's just it we're talking about uh episode uh seven that we get the we're finally answering questions from episode one you know so mm -hmm. this is so um i would say negligent to leave your customers hanging on 
for that long. I mean, um, if we go back to the Flash Gordon shows, uh, they would leave you on a cliffhanger, but then the next week they would answer that, uh, you know, that problem. They would, you know, that would be resolved within the next chapter. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it their the idea is that, okay, we're going to drop a hint in or beginning of the story in episode one and then give you the answer for it in episode seven. So this particular episode is really, uh, a, for some people, an, an exposition dump, you know, because it's a lot of yes. stuff. And I yeah. think that's what has me frustrated, even though I'm someone who's watched the show, it just seems like they just did a complete exposition dump and just wasn't really, how do I say, not presented in, in a way that not that it gives you time to recover. It just seems like it was just too soon and too early in the episode or too early or too, mm -hmm. too early in the episode and too late in the season to drop yeah. something, uh, to drop something like, uh, like this. So I, it, it just felt so, so rushed and just dumping it out there again, good information. Like you're saying, good yeah. juicy right. bits and yeah. everything, but yeah. there's no, there's no setup. There isn't, and, it doesn't really seem like it's a good setup for uh, for this. Yeah, and, and I I um, want to just let everybody know that I enjoyed this episode uh, quite a bit. I, I really did. I, I, I really loved it because finally we were getting story. <laughs> we were finally getting story. So uh, I, I did love this episode, uh, but I do have critiques about this episode and definitely the series as a whole. Um, and, and that uh, should be addressed. I, I, you know, you can tell somebody, hey, I, I give this episode uh, you know, 9.5 or whatever, or 10 or whatever, but here are some serious problems with it. Um, oh, you can, yeah. So, so yeah, I, I, I want to clear that up, but yeah, this scene is, um, we, we, we get a confirmation, which we already knew that she, um, Elias Kane was, uh, working with Gideon. We weren't sure if Gideon was still around, but, this, right. uh, or, or what condition he was in. Uh, but, uh, we, we get the confirmation that he is for sure. Um, you know, doing something here. We'll find out soon, but he's he's uh, getting um, intel from her, and she's mm -hmm. telling him that uh, all the information on the Mandalorians um, taking um, taking back uh, the 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 location of um, Navarro and helping them out, and we mm -hmm. also get a confirmation that the pirates was uh, part of Moff Gideon's doing, which is, that's good. Um, we get um, uh, also, she seems to know a little bit more about things, like the fact that the Mandalorians are planning on taking over Mandalore, which is, I, I thought that was just privy to just the Mandalorians. Yeah. So that is sort of a, a tip off if you will as to let us know that um you know we get the title spies and we have one spy here um as uh Laya kane but there could be many uh we're talking about multiple spies and we don't know who and exactly i actually have to say that i enjoy that would not have minded if this was part of episode one theme, where we can be like, okay, throughout this whole thing, let's look for clues in the in, in the characters to see who's the betrayer, and that could have been part of the fun during this time. Um, I agree with you. It's just yeah. like um, again, we'll put this back. CSI, first five minutes of the ep, you cannot miss the first five minutes or the first ten minutes. The first five minutes gets you hooked and just like, I got to find out what happens. Is this a clue? Yeah. Does this fit? Okay. No, that didn't fit. Maybe this fits. I don't know. Find out later in the episode. You know, that clue we thought didn't fit. Well, guess what? It actually fits this because we have more information. There wasn't, 
this mystery to pull you to um to solving. So I agree with you. If they would have dropped this thing about, well, Moff mm-hmm. Gideon, he didn't exactly make it. What do you mean he didn't exactly make it? You see these breadcrumb trails. So by the time he does show up here and he's given the information of, well, you know, Mandalorians, uh, they're taking over uh, Mandalore. Well, we're just like, well, how does she know that? We thought yeah. that it was only the Mandalorians that were discussing this. So yeah. how did that happen? So by that time, we would have been more invested in it. And by this time, I was kind of like, um, okay, it's nice, but we would have been nice to know some more background about this starting yeah. in the beginning of the season. It's like it was written well, but not in the right, not in the right spot. Yeah, yeah. The, I, there's definitely a problem with the placement of, of scenes and information. And and this would have been so good. It, it would have been nice if, um, let's say, episode one, mm-hmm. we had a scene similar to this where she's giving intel about the Mandalorians. Or even um, uh, the one that she shows up with... Um, uh, with Carson Teva um, mm-hmm. showing up, that uh, she then reports to a mystery character. We don't see their face, but she's giving information. We're like, okay, so now we know she must be working with someone. Mm-hmm. And who exactly. is that person? So you, it's like um, they do have these breadcrumbs, but they're not telling the audience that they're breadcrumbs so that we don't know whether fighting with an alien monster is important or Mm -hmm. what the armor has to say is important or we're not sure where to go to but by at least telling us where the betrayal is we can know what to what to kind of look out for it's sort of like you don't have a crime unless you have a body right Uh, right at at the beginning of the of of CSI, you know, there's a body, possibly how they were killed, was it strangulation, a bullet wound? Uh, from there, you can you can find the clues here and there. So mm-hmm. there's no clues for us to find anything unless you see this scene and then you rewatch the whole thing. And exactly. Then like, oh, they're there, there. Um, it, it's just not pleasant for a it. it it's more like let's surprise the audience, and it's like audiences are not so much attracted to when you surprise us, but we want to be part of the story. We want to know that we can figure out some of the stuff on our own, or maybe with all of the information we get, we're completely wrong, and that's even better, right? But give <laughs> oh us yeah, give us that opportunity. And so that's where um, I find the biggest problem with the structure of the story in the season. Um, it's got, you know, I think I've said it before, this, this all has great bones, um, but uh, too little meat on those bones. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. And I keep calling her Miss Biscuits because yes, Ms. Bis- <laughs> they're <a> Biscuits. <laughs> That's just going to stick in my head just uh, just for the, for the longest time. But yeah, I, I, was there something else in that scene that... Uh, whoa, 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 um, oh, I'm trying wait. to think if there was something else in that scene that was... Uh, pressing. They, they learn about the pirates. They, yeah, I think, I think that's we, all. There may they... be... Am I getting ahead? Is this the scene where he found out that the two factions were working together? Yeah, he's just like those, those two hate each other. Why are they? Yeah. Why are they working? Uh, why are they working together? It's like, I don't know. But guess what? We're all headed to Mandalore. <laughs> so if you if you hurry up, you just might catch them. <laughs> I wish you, you know. had delivered it like that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, that was really good information. I was like, okay, um, uh, so he knows about the different factions of, I mean, he intimately knows these people, he knows who they are, and it, it's kind of interesting because you're like, okay, so 
he must have extra intel about who these people are than just your average person. Exactly. Um, yeah. So it, it was, um, again, more eye-opening stuff, but that, that scene was packed to the gills with information. And um, it, it seems like a, a, um, a simple scene and mm -hmm. it, it, but it, it does tell you a lot about stuff that um, I, I felt we should have learned about earlier. Yeah, it was too, um, it was too packed. Um, and it seems to me like now we're down to the last two episodes, kind of like with season two, all of a sudden they're jamming all this stuff in, you know, to, uh, to tell us. And it feels like we're trying to, you know, we're too busy trying to, uh, trying to catch up and it's yes. very, uh, very, uh, very frustrating. Yeah. But I know this was definitely not frustrating because Moff Gideon is my favorite character in the Mandalorian. <laughs> so I will be up front and tell you one of the reasons that I do like this episode is because he is back. Giancarlo mm -hmm. Esposito is one of my favorite actors. Moff Gideon, <laughs> a.k.a. the Vader fanboy. I said, I don't care, but I freaking love seeing him. And it's, oh. <laughs> it's just so obvious yeah uh, that uh that that he is so i love that uh love that he's back I love this got scene. the black cape and everything got the, <laughs> yes got the black cape <laughs> the front is like yeah that's right i'm vader 2.0 that's right <laughs> and i just i just love this to me this felt like the empire Mm, yeah, um, colors, I haven't everything. felt this. Ev yeah, colors, everything. I haven't felt the gravitas in the Empire since season one, when you mm -hmm. see Moff Gideon first show up in that mm -hmm. ship, the landing of that ship. Man, <sighs> engineering geeks like me, we lost our freaking minds when we saw that. Just how yeah. just how it landed. But I I love this because this oh. felt yeah. like there were real stakes. Mm -hmm. And um, each one of those um, areas is a gate. Um, there's, so there's four gates until he gets into this room here mm -hmm. um, of protection. So nobody can get through, including the, there's, there's guards on the yep. side for each one, mm -hmm. and, and including the gate. So you, there's no way that you can muss around and get in there. You, you just can't. No. I don't care if you're a Jedi. You can't. You, you, you can't. Um, uh, so it, the security is um, is uh, very very high. I loved that because um, you know uh, what we're we're about to see is the meeting of the Shadow Council. Yes, the Shadow of, Council. Yeah, of um, remnant. Um, uh, imperial officers that that mm -hmm. uh, that are still working on uh, their plan. They're they're planning on uh, you know make a re making a revival of any kind um, at this point. And uh, one thing about that particular uh, picture Sorry, that was totally my fault. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's okay. You know, one thing about that picture is that okay. you can see each light is is supposed to represent. Uh, a person um, that is uh, that is in the room or supposed to be in the room um, at the top, okay. and there's 14 light fixtures, and I think there's there's eight of them. I want to do one. Yeah, one, two, three, eight of them. Four, so, eight. Yes. Yeah. So there's eight of them. There's supposed to be um, more people, but you know, I guess they could be off doing their thing, or you know. Uh, yeah. These are the people who can meet for this meeting, and um, it, it was very uh, interesting to meet these new characters uh, mm -hmm. to the the franchise. Um, that for some people, some of the those characters have been um, in other books and other um, uh, comic series, uh, other mm -hmm. uh, properties. Um, uh, uh, to do with uh, Star Wars, but this is the first time we're seeing them in live action. And it, mm -hmm. it was really um, awesome to see how these uh, Imperial 
upper echelon officers were, you know, how their attitude was, just the presence of this um, in incredible arrogance and mm -hmm. supremacy. Um, they, they, were, they were exciting and I, I had a lot of fun with this. I really did. I, um, like you, I really did. Uh, I really did like this scene. In a lot of ways, it reminded me of the scene in A New Hope where all the moths are around the table, you know, discussing strategy and, you know, office, office oh, yes, politics, yes, yes, so yes, to yes. speak, that yeah. same <laughs> haughty attitude that mm -hmm. some of them had. So this kind of gave me like a flashback uh, to that. But also I did like how they let the dialogue tell the story about who these people are, what they, you know, what they were interested in and pretty much how Moff Gideon works them. Oh yeah. You know, He's, he lies a lot in like too. Secrets and, you know, secrets are, you know, my thing. That's, yeah. that's my <laughs> thing. In case you forgot. Stock and trade. Know, <laughs> my whole stock, you know, my whole stock and trade. And oh, before I go there, hold on a second. Yeah, they think yes. these are the bodies where the dark troopers are in. Yeah, I like this. Yes, I like um, that. I was like, okay. And and, and you don't know who the clones are of. Uh, so there's a yeah. lot of speculation of, of who who those clones are of. Some people think that it's uh, clones of Darth Maul. Um, some people think it's clones of Gideon himself. Um, and, um, maybe they're just not formed yet and they need DNA. Um, so, uh, it, it's, it's very fascinating to, to kind of figure this out. Um, and based on some things that, well, I'll wait till he says what he says, um, mm -hmm. before we dive into that, we just remember this, this wonderful scene here. It's a, it's a great moment. Um, yeah. Yeah, I really, I really did like that. How he's walking by there, and that's actually a callback to season one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you wouldn't know that if you didn't uh, watch season one, but still, you kind of get the idea of what's uh of what's going on in here. See, like I said, Vader fanboy, I'm telling you, down to, <laughs> down to the cape. right down to the chest plate with the lights chest and everything, and the lights and everything. I almost want to say, can you make ice with that? You know, but this, <laughs> this was this was an homage that I didn't really mind because he's such a good actor. He has that same gravitas, you know, without without the mask, and like James Earl Jones did to mm -hmm. make you think that you know he is Darth Vader. It's like you hear it's like, yes, this guy is this guy is no one to mess with. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so we've got um Captain Pelly on there. Mm -hmm. Um who is actually um Thrawn uh Grand Ar Admiral Thrawn's right hand man. Okay. I didn't know and, who he was. Yes, and he is patiently waiting for Theron to return. He, you know, so he's holding everything down and telling people, "Yes, Theron, it will be, will be back." Um, but at this time period, Theron is um, mysteriously has vanished, and um, you know, they don't, you know, there's they don't know when he's going to come back. Actually. Um, hmm. Dave Filoni knows, though. <laughs> okay, I'll say as somebody who did not watch the Clone Wars, as someone who had only heard rumblings about who Thrawn was from the books, and I did not read the books, this was an interesting introduction. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that they did that, because for those of us who we don't know, this is Hux, and why do I feel like I've heard this name before? It is um, the father of, um, I believe it's was a it General Hux or Armitage Hux from the uh, sequels. Uh, do you remember Hux? <laughs> he is shows the... you how much I remember of the sequel trilogy, <laughs> but I but I do remember that name. I yes, do Hux that name. was okay. the, ultimately the the spy, um, and that was on the um, uh, the side of the New Order. And um, second in command to um, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Kylo Ren. 
Uh, oh, okay. Yes, uh, they, okay. they were. Um, and um, the actor here is actually the brother of the actor who played Hux in the... Uh, really? In the, yeah, they, I mean, they reached into the family tree for that. <laughs> They were like, we need uh, to know all the names of all of the people in your family <laughs> See who can act. Oh, that's funny. That's but I, but I, I did like how much time they took mm -hmm. uh, with explaining the characters, not only who they were, but you kind of get their, get their attitudes. Um, you get the idea of that. Yes, they are all plotting something mm -hmm. yes. that, you know, the New Republic has no idea what's uh yes what's and so one of the things that they mention um uh is that uh they are pretending to be a lot of them are pretending to be um highway robbery robbers if you will or uh warlord lords so what mm -hmm. they do is um they go to the hyper what did they say the hyperspace lanes and pretending to be warlords and basically rob people of their goods. And they're just uh, stocking all that stuff up uh, for Admiral Thrawn's return. Um, and uh, one of the other things that they're working on while they wait for Thrawn is Project Necromancer, yes, which sir. Hux is, is doing. Um, and so he's uh, heading up that research there which will of course lead to uh the reanimation of uh of palpatine eventually which is uh yes uh, yeah i gotta roll my eyes at that one mm -hmm. her project mm -hmm. necromancer project bring back the dead guy aka weekend at bernie's is pretty much what <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Palpatine. so the, these it. measures i think were in place after mm -hmm. Palpatine's death, because you know, because Disney, sorry, yeah. <laughs> because I'll Disney, I'll, I'll give him. Well, you could have fixed it in the movie, but you know, oh well, whatever. It, it is what it is. It was cool to have him mention that, but uh, yeah, his facial expressions kill me. I mean, yeah, just, he's not Vader, but you can tell he pulls certain, you know mannerisms well he's also very charming as well and charismatic oh, yes. and very it's like um this is a guy uh, uh, that you love to hate it's 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 a throwback to the old um evil bad guy it's it's not like okay you have to know about my childhood and how wounded mm -hmm. i was as a kid and how the reason why i won't let you know i'm so cold is because of this that and the other no this guy is just mean and he's loving it. <laughs> he's Every loving it. Every single minute of it. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I, I uh, just love a good villain like that. I, I do. do. This is yeah. the kind of villain where he's just like, you know what? Uh, if you asked me to rob a bank, I would think about it. I <laughs> <laughs> couple, well, couple seconds. He would make a good argument for you, right? I mean, he's the kind of guy that would psychologically trick you into doing it and fully well and once you were done I'm like i didn't i didn't force you to do anything <laughs> no, you just to do it it's 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 like i tell people it's like <laughs> why emperor palpatine was so good at what he mm -hmm. did that seduction started early on oh yes oh yes with that and it was again we're talking about clues just yeah the way that he literally he wound up seducing Anakin, but it wasn't it wasn't everything all at once. It was a piece here, a piece here, a piece here, and you could see it. And you're just like, yeah, he, he just like can't he's can't resist it. it. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's still doing it, you know. Yeah. And, it, yeah. and that's what we love about unrepentant bad guys, unrepentant yeah. villains, villains who seem um, invincible. Mm -hmm. and dangerous very. and they're ahead of the good guys like they know what they're going to do they've studied them they are um they're they're not making dumb mistakes um you know they are are definitely ahead of you know three or four steps ahead of the bad guy and that's what i like i like a real challenge for my good guys um mm -hmm. you, you know 
they're they're trying to escape they can't because you know this is they have to get creative they have to get creative and um i think that's why i i do love this episode so much is that he's doing what he does best in this episode and i really wish we had the entire season to play with this a little bit more to see the traps he would set for these guys mm -hmm. and sweeten the deal and make it uh even more uh intense when you see them like fall to their lowest point and then maybe and, and then uh, hopefully and being the good guys overcome that um but uh we we don't know um just what they're going to do yet but uh, again i love um, this character had so much more potential that we're getting that we could have gotten from this season. And that's one of the biggest things that I load is not getting more of him. Yeah. I, I would have loved to have seen it uh, much, much earlier than, and, uh, than we got him. And the wild thing is I was talking about like, you know, last week and believe i may have mentioned hey there there could have been more time for din Djarin to develop his character during the season there's plenty of time because a lot of these episodes are so short they're so short and and i have really bad news next week's episode is only 38 minutes long you gotta be kidding me yeah I'm like, how are you going to wrap up this story in 38, 38 minutes? 38 minutes. I, I have to pause with this. <laughs> okay, so normally your episodes are going to be like 45 to 50 minutes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they couldn't be, I mean, I could see some being 40 minutes. I could see some being 50 minutes. Okay, that's kind that's enough of a leeway but 38 minutes for a season finale I, yeah. either they're just gonna dump everything like this is all we have left and throw it out there and not wrap things up that's, cleanly yeah, so to speak. The, it's like yeah. i'm worried they're not gonna stick the land just like with season two they could not stick the landing on that yeah and I think with season two, definitely, I know a lot of people were emotionally um, excited by all of the events of the last episode of season two. I thought that they wrote themselves into a corner and we're just seeing Agreed. how they have wrote, rewritten all of the things that happened in that last episode out of the story. Yeah. And, I mean, it, and so... Um, <laughs> I, I'm trying to wonder, like, what are they going to do in 30 minutes? I mean, it's going to be fast. <laughs> I, man, I, I may need some wine for, uh, for that Ooh. one. <laughs> I, I'm close. I'm very, very close. But uh, I'm, I hear you. The next one. But I did love this Shadow Council um, scene. Oh, great idea. I, I loved how it was shot. Um, I love all the discussion. You get like the petty bickering. You always see the Imperial, yes. you know, doing, well, why should we give you um, three Praetorian guards? Mm -hmm. Now, if I remember correctly, those are the guards that like the emperor had. Mm -hmm. They had, man, their outfits were bad. They, yes. <laughs> they were yes. like, yes. it was like, it seemed like red, like pleather, yeah. you know, from head to toe. These were not dudes that you effed with so he's like you want three of these things um and i think he said tie not tie fighters they called it something else it was a tie something but it wasn't a tie fighter hmm. and he says oh and bombers like don't yeah, forget bombers, the other yeah. thing that i told you that i was gonna need and i'm like why the heck do you need all of that stuff and then he drops the thing where guess what mandalorians are going to mandalore they're gonna repick yeah. mandalore so uh that's why this is <laughs> I, why I, I need all this stuff yeah uh, I, uh, I love when captain pelion was like you think it's still an issue <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like dang uh yeah it was say, this freaking guy you know? <laughs> 
But yo, the the way they perked up when he said Mandalorians, they were like, okay. Wait, what? Really? You got I, it. That's all you had to say. Like yeah. <laughs> Samuel Jackson said it for <laughs> Send it a cleaner. That's what you had to say, you know. But I love how they, yeah, they all perked up. It's like, yeah, it's like, okay, yeah. well, you will, you will have all of that. It's like, yeah, I, I love that because, and I, and again, I wish I, we had seen something like this earlier. But I digress from that argument, and uh, you see how much the Mandalorians are feared, you know. They yes. they were like, okay, this is our opportunity to wipe them out. Here, take this. You know, do your best. Um, yeah. And um, it 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 was good. And it, the thing is, you know, they paid it off in this exact episode. It was you know very well um, handled. Mm -hmm. I was really surprised. I was like, oh wow, they they're actually you know yeah. completing a storyline. Uh, uh, actually, yeah, <laughs> the storyline. It's like a real, you know, a real conflict, a real reason to watch it. I keep watching. Want to go see if the Mandalorians are get going to get bombed into the Stone Age or something, <laughs> you know? But that, that's very simple. You have your absolute pure baddie, which is something that's been sorely lacking through this whole entire season. Who's the big bad? This episode, even though it's even though it's too little too late in a way you have the bad guy established already. Yeah. Yes. So the threat is there. We are scared for the Mandalorians. We're scared mm -hmm. for Din. We're scared for uh, Grogu. We, we don't know um, what's going to happen. And, you know, uh, it, it's wonderful. I, I am like, yes, finally we have some tension. We have conflict. Mm -hmm. uh, it's beautiful. I, I, where I where have you been all this season? <laughs> I know it's just like again, it's like I keep yelling. I did this same thing last year, you know. It's like why is it for some reason you can't figure that out? Of course they, you know, they uh, they did a, a pay and spray job a little bit. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> it's darker here that they just got a touch of graffiti. Yeah, a little uh, bit tag the ship for you, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> I, I like you. that. I was like, wow, this is really um that's how you would differentiate the fact that it's not a um imperial mm -hmm. you know vessel. And so yeah, I like that a lot. I did. That was actually that was pretty cool. And of course there's there's Grogu in the front. Sitting on mommy's lap. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he was so cute longer. this time. Yeah, cute. And there's a, there's this one lady um on Twitter that keeps calling him a gremlin, and I'm like, yes, he looks like a gremlin. <laughs> he does. He does. He looks like a mogwai. <gasps> so cute. Without any 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 doubt, but yeah, I did. I thought this was kind of cute. I it thought so like, too. Yeah. It's it's showing too. Like she's taken to him. Mm -hmm. Uh. Uh, you know, and maybe it's signaling the transference of like, uh, you know, who knows what they're going to do with Din if they're going to phase him out and, yeah. and she's going to be the main person. But she, he's he's now part of like, you know, her vicinity mm -hmm. uh, get or maybe even just getting the uh, audience used to seeing him with her. Um, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And um, I don't hate it. It's just. uh I, somebody better bring him back from the dead. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I, do like that. I do like that shot, though. I did like that. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. I, and I like the fact that um, we're seeing these ships in a, in a different way mm -hmm. than we had originally seen them and used for war. And um, uh, now it's, it's just... Um, you know, it's beautiful to see all of these people like getting together. And um, uh, this was a really good scene. I, I like when they just strode up and they're like, you want some of this? <laughs> like, yeah. What's up? What's up? Let's take the children inside. Okay. 
<laughs> I was like, like dang. Girl folks are going to talk, huh? Mm -hmm. They're just like, pretty much, how dare you bring these people, uh, you bring them here. So uh, again, this just, 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 just drives me nuts that they all have, you know, they have their helmets on, but the other ones do not have their helmets on. It's kind of like all of them need to be off or all of them need to be on. That just, yeah. I agree. I think with something you said before, it's like, but the whole keep your helmet on that kind of painted things into a, into a corner. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> that the tribe children of the watch is, you know, uh, my my thoughts have changed, and I'll talk. I'll tell you all about that when we get to the part where I need to okay. <laughs> let loose. To let loose, uh, but uh, right now, I you know this little standoff is just showing how, even though they are from the same, um, you know, beginnings, they are they are all Mandalorian. There is a strong. Um, repugnance for the other it's they they don't like or trust each other and no. it's just um even though they're the same it's just they're different and 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 they um their differences keep them apart um and so it, it's it's sad in a way you can uh look at the um the what's happening with the mandalorians for so many situations with um you know with world views and uh world mm -hmm. situations today but um it, it is um so it makes you want to scream like guys just just be friends <laughs> you're from the same you know group and uh and you really root for them to you know it's going to be rocky right mm -hmm. but it you still root for them to eventually um hopefully work um through yeah. their differences you know to 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 find some common ground right and the urgency is added because as we've seen in previous scenes moff gideon knows that you guys are trying to retake mandalore so y'all need to yep hurry up kiss make up whatever because <laughs> we know what's coming so yeah. like you were saying retro nerd girl there's this sense of urgency that we the audience can actually feel a sense of urgency that we really haven't felt in at least i feel in hardly any of the episodes this season until oh, uh, until this this one yeah it, it is very um nice to have those um those nervous moments of like, okay, are they going to make it? You know, yes. first they have to get along in order for them to come together and defeat whatever Moff is going to do to them. Mm -hmm. And so there is real concern. There's real concern. Um, and, and that to me is one of the biggest um, pieces to storytelling. What is the conflict? Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you any of the conflict of the stuff before. It just wasn't big enough. No. Of the conflict. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Bo-Katan wants the dark uh, saber, but she's too afraid to ask for it or whatever. I mean, yeah. well, come on, come on. Yeah. I, I mean, that, that doesn't work. We need, we need this uh, threat. Yeah. Not like, you know, uh, big huge flying kaiju took my kid and now we have to go and find him really that's the episode yeah okay okay i okay. i think the writers think that the reason why mandalorian was became successful was because of the giant monsters in the first season i think i think they think that's the reason why it was successful because there are so many giant monsters in this season and that was not the reason why it was successful no and it's I, it's, it's something sorry i mean i mean um oh, no, yeah no. as a matter of fact i was talking to somebody else and i said they were like yeah they need to call this whole season rise of the kaiju and i said thank you because every time i see one <laughs> It seems like there's one in every episode. There's like a dinosaur one. There's like, you know, Rodan, the one that's flying. There's, you know, 
it's just like it was too it was you know it was too much i mean we saw that not that the you know we saw the blurred and then some other monster and then in season two we saw the crate dragon which didn't at all look what i thought it looked like the sandworm from dune rather than this ominous creature that ben kenobi had to learn how to mimic what it sounded like to scare you know sand people but i, th I think you're right it's just it didn't work because of all of you know the creatures and everything it's like it worked because it told the story of the mandalorian mm -hmm. you know basically who is that helmeted man who rolls into town and stuff exactly. just starts popping off and uh <laughs> popping off and happening and can, can i just pour one out for uh, ig11 um i'm not me. happy with what they did with him i i mean <sighs> I, I, I love Baby Yoda. I do. I do. <laughs> they have basically made IG-11 into, I don't know, I guess a motorized baby hammock or kid carrier. and A vehicle, yeah. Yeah, like an exoskeleton. You know, like from Aliens? Mm -hmm. When yeah, uh, Ripley like got into this. This is exactly what it looks like. And this this is just me. IG-11 was a badass assassin robot. He oh, went yeah. down in the first, was it the first season? Why am I drawing a blank? Is it, was it in the second? Was it the, it was second? In the second season? It was in the second season. Uh, he went down oh, in that yeah. river of lava like the Terminator. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, oh yes. Like Terminator too. Or that, da, 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 da. Yeah. I say, and, and it was cool how, how he, uh, how he went out considering yeah. what kind, how dangerous he was. And then yeah. they tried to resurrect him and then thought they were looking for a chip, but I guess they couldn't find a chip. So basically they just stripped him of everything. Yeah. And now he doesn't even run himself. He's like, runs by a joystick <laughs> I, I just and now he's ig12 i it, this is a cute effect but i think it really cheapens what happened with ig with ig80 ig11 mm -hmm. with ig11 i just really think it yeah I, I, it just feels like they cheapened how he went out and the sacrifice for how he went out they should have just left him as a darn statue okay i was happy with that well yeah i th i think the whole ig11 thing doesn't work for a lot of people baby um grogu inside of a mech suit that works but it's like it being IG eleven now IG twelve is like uh like okay it, it's it I can see where it's also calling back to season two where um, Grogu was kind of on his on his back or in like a mm -hmm. chassis or something and yeah was, like a baby and they were, yeah. yeah and now baby. Um, uh, Grogu is going to be able to, I hope they're going to do more with him in it because for as much as he was able to do with inside this thing, which I was like, okay, I, I can see the benefit of him being in this body because that's what's been really holding him back from being part of the story mm -hmm. is that he's so little and he is a baby. Um, he understands, but he... Um, this this particular scene told me one thing in, partic in, in particular about him. He does not have the vocal ability to speak as much as he tries. He can't. He can't no. actually make the words come out. Um, but he's got full um, faculties. Um, so he can he can have probably if he knew how to, um, you know, if there were more buttons than just no and yes. He could probably have a full sentence tell you a whole story, um, but he just can't speak, and so not not yet at least. And so, I, I was impressed by that bit of information because mm -hmm. um, it also in in many ways he is a simple child. Um, 
and you know him just hitting yes 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 is like his only way to say i love this this is wonderful i'm enjoying mm -hmm. myself finally i can i can hang out you know and do things mm -hmm. with my dad um because he wants to be a part of the adventure and so um i i love i love that idea but yes you're right that was a mistake to put him inside of that particular um, machine. Yeah. Uh, and with all of Star Wars's um, kind of treatment of robots in general and how they try to make them so human-like, mm -hmm. they this is the I would say the second time they did something like this, where they took a robot and changed them into something else. Um, I believe they did the same thing in uh, Solo, where they took uh, the robot in that um, that uh, particular movie and turned mm -hmm. it into the intelligence for the, the Fal Millennium Falcon computer. Um, and it was like, wow, that, that sucks. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> how is that better? Um, and so, yeah, they 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 need to work on what their message is about robots in this universe. I don't think they have a grasp on that necessarily. Um, they th I think they think there's a story there to tell, but they mm -hmm. don't know what they're saying uh, because in the episode prior, I mean, <laughs> there was a, a totally different message about yeah. robots. So with the, um, uh, yeah, with the robots, it was. Yeah, this was not honorable to to IG eleven yeah, at all. But that I didn't, um, that I didn't, didn't like and I feel it. like if there is a body for him uh, for Grogu to walk around in, I would prefer mm -hmm. something more substantial, like um, you know something with uh, with a shield to shield him, something um, that looks more maybe a little bit more humanoid, um, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and like I, I, I do. I like what he does with this. Uh, how Grogu uses the, the yeah, um, steals mm -hmm. some fruit, little bugger. <laughs> <laughs> Put it down. Like, no. Put it down. Now no. I can grab it on my own. I don't need Daddy to to yeah. to, to get it for me. You have to pay for that now. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah, it's like it's it's like it's cute, but it's just like if it was any other robot, I I wouldn't think twice about it. But the fact that it's uh IG eleven, yeah. it's, it's just like nah, it's but it's almost do, like a joke. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I do give them credit for bringing back around the story plot line of ig11 because it was hanging for yeah, a long time we're like, long, are they gonna I'm, find a chip are they gonna, are they gonna put a chip in there are they gonna bring them back what are they gonna do you know and, yeah i mean this yeah. is uh yeah that would be expected but you know he is a uh, he is indeed indeed back in Somebody said that was one of those baby bird things. Yes. I, <laughs> I want confirmation, but well, uh, I think one of the nerds online said that it wasn't. So uh, thank you, uh, thank you, nerd. Dang it! Dang it. Uh, that, I was going to have a pretty sadistic <laughs> joke there, but uh, anyway, yeah, yeah. Like, there, I I love uh, when the guys like decode everything. Um, and, and get to the the nitty gritty of all of the stuff and that we yeah. uh, that that's in the background. Yeah, it was good seeing them all, seeing them all together. For some reason, I blanked out on what this scene was. Oh, this is the scene where um, she says um, we're going to get a squadron to go to. Uh, Mandalore, um, and she wants volunteers from both camps, mm -hmm. and um, people are going to start um, saying, "Oh, I, I volunteer." Um, oh and, yeah, They're like uh, yeah, I'll go, I'll go, yeah. like yeah, yeah, I'll go. 
and then uh, Jaren is the first to say I'll go and mm -hmm. nominates uh, Grow, and so will Grogu. I was like, what? Hey, so yeah, and him too. We, we're we're, and, we're and, a package deal. Now, yeah, I remember that part. And little Grogu stands up. It's so adorable. <laughs> he is an adorable little uh, little booger, and I, I love these shots. And um, the the armorer also agrees to go with them too, mm -hmm. which is um. So Y'all roll out. It's like, yeah, we're going back. We're going back to Mandalore. That was very nice. I I did like that. Um, that they were, they were all going back. Mm -hmm. Um and. Uh, oh yeah, this is. This is the part they realize that the um, the planet has changed uh, since the last time they've seen yeah. it, and there, yeah. that's got to break your heart. You know, it's like maybe going back to the house you grew up in, and it's it's mm -hmm. you know nothing there. Yeah, it's like it's nothing like what you you know what you remember. I do like this. Why this reminds me of like your. Uh, military jet <laughs> they're ready to the paratroopers are ready to roll out oh yeah i thought that was a cool i thought that was a cool uh a cool look i love i love it when they do that and then they they all landed it was so I like cool that scene. yeah we got paz Vistla in front uh, you know we're like yes we're back home we're back i know home. Yeah, finally, it's like, y'all better hurry up. Mob Gideon's trying to find y'all. <laughs> Again, actually real, real, you know, real stakes and a real, uh, mm -hmm. a real sense of, uh, a sense of urgency. Uh, she's smiling because um, uh, she's finally, like, happy that, you know, she's a little happy here. She's a little happy. Yes, together, you know, yeah. it's like it's great we're all gonna go and we're gonna take over we're gonna take over mandalore she's like mm -hmm. warm up and i was like yep. oh look at that look at that <laughs> and she had a little smile on her face that was nice kind of cool to see all of them uh all of them together i, I keep seeing ig 11's carcass <laughs> <laughs> that really did bug the crap out of me throughout the rest of this. Now, this effect I thought was cool. Oh, yeah. I love it. Everybody's comparing it to Pirate to the Caribbean. Um, because, you know, of course, it's a ship um, that is running on the glass side of the glass surface of the, um, mm -hmm. of the planet. And it and, looks um, kind of... Uh... I don't want to say raggedy, but yes, kind of have like that black pearl mm -hmm, <laughs> kind of look yeah. where they're coming in. They're like, who is this? Yeah. And it turns out that these guys, I don't know if they were part of Bo-Katan's personal guard um, or what. First of all, they fly down on jetpacks, which I thought was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. That was a and great thing. And it turns out that they've they never left. Mm -hmm. They never left Mandalore. Um, and I and figured I guess, that there would be some survivors. I was like, oh, there's got to be some people that made it through. Um, and it turns out that uh, they did. And they tell, you know, about how, you know, the Imperials came and basically, you know, bomb the whole place of course the night of you know night of a thousand tears mm -hmm. and um they said yeah they we didn't surrender you know they just they just bombed us annihilated us and that's when bo katan says yeah but i did surrender and apparently she made a deal with mob gideon mm -hmm. to give up the dark saber but of course you can't trust a <laughs> you can't trust an imperial yeah so he double crossed her. Especially not that one. <laughs> yes. Especially not that one. So you had some people who were just like Bo Fatan basically betrayed us. Yeah. And um I really like that because it, it seemed like she was um she got a chance to tell her side of the story. 
Um, mm-hmm. Even if you go back and, and try to do some research, find out, okay, well, how did um, this get, end up in, in Moff Gideon's hand? Um, mm-hmm. There is no other context for it except for her explaining it. So I'm glad we got that story wrapped up. Yeah. Um, so that we, we now figured out how he got his hands on the, the blade. And um, I think a lot of people gave her respect because she, um, uh, she, um, she was trying to negotiate with the terrorists. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, and uh, it, it didn't uh, quite work out the way she did. You know, it, she wanted it to, but she was hoping she was going to be able to save some lives. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it's sort of like that scene in uh, A New Hope when, um, it, you know, um, uh, Leah is asked to say, oh, give up where the rebel base is and we'll split, spare um, your home planet. And she she says something. And, yeah, she said uh, the Yeah, and, and they still blow up the planet anyway. Yeah. And so it, it was very um, kind of reminded me of that. I was like, oh, wow. So um, that is definitely a common practice um, with the uh, imperial um, officers or imperial personnel that uh, they will betray you, uh, uh, betray any deals that they make with you. I mean, remember when <laughs> Darth Vader said, pray, don't alter the deal any further. I was know, waiting right? for you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Lando's like, this deal is getting worse all the time. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, my God. It was perfect. But yeah, I, I did like the scene with them, um, with them talking. Again, it's yeah. like you find out more about Mandalorian culture as portrayed in the show. Mm-hmm. I just want to add that because I have not read uh read the books, even though I have a few of them. I haven't cracked them open yet. But this was good to uh this was good to see this whole discussion. And of course, Grogu's like, oh, you're so very sad. Such a sad yes. story. Like his, oh, look at his eyes. Yes, he's like, oh, like, I feel so much empathy for this person. Oh, he's so sweet. I think that would do something good with that, with Grogu. I'm going to be mad. They need to. They need to. Besides putting him in an exoskeleton, you know. Yes. Yes, I, 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 I personal. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 oh, oh this is the... <laughs> This is the scene that everybody's talking about. Um, and you know what? I really wish this came in, in episode two. Mm. Right? Because then we got Din Djarin with a purpose now. Yeah. At all costs, you know, follow this late lady Bo-Katan. This is the first mm-hmm. time he ever called her lady. That's right. Um, so I was like, wow, we are talking about um, this. This is giving me like authorian vibes here, you know, mm-hmm. with the knights and the ladies and that kind of um, that kind of uh, not necessarily romantic, but definitely the 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 honorable, like, um, you know, soldier that will lay his life down for his country. Um, and, and, you know, often the lady of the, um, of the castle. And so I just love that. I was like, wow, this is, I would have loved this in episode two, where it would have been established that he now knows the truth about Bogotan and mm-hmm. what she sacrificed. And she now knows that he can count on her. He has a purpose. And we're like, yes, Din, whatever Din does, we're behind him. And that was what's missing the whole season is a purpose for our favorite character. He's been floundering and just following and uh, just going with the scene instead of us following you know him on the journey mm-hmm. and so uh, th- this was a-, a great moment for me i was like fine finally din says more than two words 
finally we get um, an, an inkling of what he's thinking. And, and finally we get a purpose for him. He's, uh, you know, it, it was wonderful. I was like, uh, I, I loved it. Yeah, I really did like this. This would have been better, like you were saying, like in episode two, instead of seeing, you know, salty bo Katan sitting in the throne and just like, yeah, go to Bangalore <laughs> on your own. I don't freaking care about you. You know, this this would have been much better in the beginning. Again, giving him a purpose as opposed to kind of letting, not kind of did, just let him flounder, you know, out there, yeah. flounder, get captured, you know. And then she has to come and uh, and save him. It's there is a better way to uh, to do that. But I, I did I did so. like this conversation. Yeah. And then they had the moon behind them. It's like yeah, it looked very cool. I yeah. like. It was a dark shot, but you could see it. Yeah. In the house of the dragon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was so mad about that. <sighs> okay, and this is the scene. Uh, where the armorer um, says, oh, there's some sick people. Why don't I take back to the ship and take the ship to the garrison um, to uh, get medical treatment? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, bo being a fair person and smart uh, and also um, uh, compassionate, says, okay, yeah, that sounds reasonable, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so, um, why she asked to be there to go with them in the first place is like, uh, you know, definitely has me on the, as soon as this happened, I was like, mm, the armor, could this be the second spy? Hmm. And um, I, I was like, okay, she's going to let her do what? And so, yeah, as we go further on in the story, there's the, the armor taking everybody up uh, to, um, to the garrison. And they're like, you know, uh, there is no communication. You cannot communicate. Um, to anyone on this planet it's been said mm -hmm. it's been said and so um the uh, so according to them there's no communication so they can't communicate mm -hmm. if they're in trouble or anything right um and they're stranded there's no other vehicle there's no other vehicle so um just uh you know just a little little like uh not general no. like you know uh, something yeah. don't seem right. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of like, hmm, mm -hmm. you want to do that? Okay. Yeah, it just seemed a little, a little interesting. Well, yeah, kind of like, you want to do that, huh? Okay. Yeah, right now. Okay. Like, I can yeah. see taking the sick to the ship to make sure they're safe mm -hmm. and waiting there and waiting until. Um, everybody got back, but um, to take them off the planet is mm -hmm. is it, it it's like you know my my spidey senses are tingling. <laughs> <laughs> now this I'm here, looking at you, Arminer. I'm looking at you because <laughs> she's been she's been very shady. Mm -hmm. You know, not forthcoming with information, then, you know, information, and then Bo-Katan has her, had her take her helmet off, but the armor still kept hers on. Mm -hmm. Makes you wonder. And she's you know, the one who told everybody we need to take over Mandalore again. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to all go retake Mandalore. Okay, well, you weren't trying to do that um, since the show started. Why all yeah. of a sudden do you want to, you know, do you want to go and do that? Yeah. It's kind of weird. She was also the one who said, hey, um, Mandalore is poisoned. Mm-hmm. It's impossible. It's poisoned. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's yeah. poisoned. Yeah. Don't even think yeah. about going there. Well, I'm going to go there. And okay. she's the one who's enforcing the rule. You can't take mm -hmm. off the helmet. Yeah. 
And we've been asking all this time, why can't you take off your helmet? They haven't explained it. Not and, at all. And I'm starting to think. I'm starting to think. Well, maybe they the reason why you, you uh, she doesn't want anybody to take off their helmet, what she looks like is a tip off to who she really is. I would have to agree with you because yeah. we thought that was really weird. How come if we're all going to join together, why do we all have our helmets on? Mm -hmm. That's a very, that's a very good point. So I am, point. No, look, I could be wrong, yeah. but all um, of those clues are right there. They, yeah. they, they set that up. They set that up. You look like a probable, uh, probable suspect. <laughs> There's a couple other people, but we'll get to them in time. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to the other people that may be mm -hmm. um, suspicious. Well, oh, this, this is wonderful. This is what I call the why can't we be friends scene. Yes. You know, yes. they're like playing this game and basically so-and-so called him, you know, a Mandalorian redneck. And that's when, you know, the fight was about to, uh, about to start because the, um, we'll say the Mandalorians who were lined with Bo-Katan pretty much think that, you know, the children of the watch are zealots and backwards and crazy. <laughs> yeah. And nuts and all of that. And dude had his jet pack on, he fired up. He was ready, ready to go, ready to go. And that was kind of a, a cool, it was a cool little fight, you know, it wasn't, yeah. that, you know, it, it wasn't was. too intense, but it was, um, it, it, it was just showing you how these things can escalate Mm -hmm. um, between uh, these two groups so quickly, just uh, uh, having a game where we're trying to learn, you know, trying to uh, share a moment together mm -hmm. and all of a sudden flip the table over, let's fight. Yeah, let's fight. <laughs> it's like at the bar where it's like, you're cheating. You call me a liar. I'm not calling you for dinner. All right, you insulted me. Let's fight. Bar yeah. game turns over and all of that. And of course, Grogu, he gets to take no, 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 which I thought was cheesy, but still cute at the same time when he gets in between them. Yeah. Dan's like, I didn't teach him that. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that is probably, and I, if they don't come back to it, they're, I mean, this is a, a very big opportunity they have with this character of mm -hmm. Grogu in this mech suit. And I hope they change it to something a little bit more substantial. Right. Um, he, with this new body, um, he can separate, he can stand between these two guys. Like, they couldn't get through. Like, mm -hmm. oh, it was strong enough to hold them back for, for, for a little minute. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, wow. So he can now um, impart some wisdom of the Jedi, some wisdom that he, um, the purity that he has as a, as a, as a child too. Like, mm -hmm. no, this is wrong. And um, it, it was really a wonderful moment in my, in my eyes as far as like, nobody there was going to stand up. No, to they're just they're like, like let them fight. Let them yeah, get out of die. They'll die. Whatever. That's just that's how it goes. That's that's how mm -hmm. we've always been. Um, meanwhile, holding in uh, animosity. Oh, you killed one of my our guys. Well, maybe along the way we'll kill one of yours. And mm -hmm. so he squashed that, you know. And so maybe this time, maybe this time, the Mandalorians have a chance to to stick together because of Rogu's influence. Mm -hmm. um, and so I thought that that was really interesting. Um, and they, you know, they just say, you know, uh, they don't let the scene just go. They did a good thing here, which was they talked about it a little, you know, and she's like, oh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. your, your, your apprentice is, you know, uh, uh, is a good job on that. And he's like, I didn't teach him anything. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm teaching that. It's like, oh, <laughs> really? I don't believe you one bit. <laughs> and, it's like, 
and it's and it's like you know he's some of that you know that his early days of being a, a jedi and also his innocence is is part of the reason why i think um the the um the mandalorians may have a chance in the future um mm. with his influence with his influence so I, I was really hopeful at this. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is doing something different to uh, the story of the Mandalorians. Um, so there, there's a possibility there. I just hope they don't squander it and, and throw it away. Yeah. Um, or compress it. So it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That moment's going way, way too fast. Of course, yeah. here's the armor. Yeah, and so I'm, you know, she has those sick people on the the well, sick people on the. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on, I love uh, my pretending quotes. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, in the um, in, in the vehicle. I don't, I don't know. They could not. Maybe those guys um, that are sort of the um, the pirates or the survivors of this world. Maybe mm -hmm. they could be part of the thing that it, it it's kind of surprising they've been on this planet all this time they know where the forge is mm -hmm. and, and they're taking everybody to the forge but you know they they don't know what's there and it, we'll find out what's there but they don't know what's there they and don't so, know what's there and the armor it's like a why is it the armor at the forefront of that yeah, because she's supposed to be at the forge. Whether they're at the forge for, for the for for no reason, if she's not there. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of. It could be all of them. It could, <laughs> you are you're a spy. You're a spy. You're a spy. <laughs> Everybody. We're all spies until I say otherwise. Wow. <laughs> Big yeah, explosions. And, yeah, this was. <laughs> I, I didn't like this at all because this monster didn't have to be there. This Again, whole action it was unnecessary. I um, don't. I don't get their obsession with uh, with these. It was it was it was funny to see it in the first episode. It's like yeah. okay, I get it, but it's just overused now. It's just it it didn't seem to fit in. No, and, and it didn't have really a resolution of any kind or a reason mm -hmm. for happening. Was it sleeping and then it heard the rumblings? And uh, you've got to give us more context for this situation. Um, because it, it, at this point, it's, it's just noise. At this point, it's just noise. Mm -hmm. um, especially after going through this and what they they get into next now that's more interesting and fascinating this is just this is just noise yeah this is just like filler that could have easily just been could have saved the money on the cut. yeah <laughs> it's just like uh, yeah i just forget that why unless they said hey we got this kaiju footage we didn't use yeah we'll shove it in that episode <laughs> it's just yeah. such a it's so you can tell I hang around too many Hollywood folks back in the day. It's like we don't want to lose the money we put on the shot. Okay, fine. We'll go ahead and uh, go oh, ahead. Oh man, it. yeah, that's probably what happened. Uh, but they could, they could, they should have just yeah left that out. Um, yeah, we we could have, we could have, we could have done more. without it. Trust me, yeah. it wasn't that impressive. Just had them walk find down the there. forge, and they're all walking like, oh, we used to live here, and. All of that, they're like, "Oh, look, there's more Mandalorians," <laughs> and I don't want to sit too. I'm like, "Oh, well, where did these dudes come from?" And then it's like, uh, "No, they're not Mandalorians." Yeah. And then you see that they're actually uh, death troopers. I get, I I think they are some sort of troopers. They are a, a form of troopers. <laughs> believe that these are yeah that they're the death troopers because um uh, they, I well, think we'll, they... we'll talk about it like a little bit a little bit later yeah later a little bit later on but there's there's a reason why um 
they are the way that the the way that mm -hmm. they are. Mm -hmm. And um, immediately we're told that they are wearing Beskar armor mm -hmm. during the sequence, and it's like okay, um, so. So I guess that explains the Beskar that was in the transport when Moff Gideon got sprung. Yes, yes. So I mean that closes that up, sort mm -hmm. of, kind of, right? I mean, yeah. we, we don't really need uh, an explanation of that, really. I mean, uh, we can deduce, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. We we can deduce that. Okay, this is Empire um, related. Um, that that's most likely either Moff or somebody else. At this point, we haven't seen Moff in the contest text of this planet. No, yet. no, we haven't. Because but, all we knew from the last episode was that Moff Gideon, basically, he had been extracted mm -hmm. from the New Republic shuttle and that there were traces of Beskar. So I think we were saying, well, we don't know if it was truly Mandalorians or if it was somebody wearing Beskar. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you're right. They wrapped that up and they basically said the Death Troopers are wearing Beskar, Beskar yeah. armor. And one line. Great. Yeah. Great. You guys, I mean, high five. You you I did it. I credit for that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, are we going <laughs> to fix that? Are we going to tie that end up, you know, there, yeah. uh, right there with what's going on? Because why would Mandalorians nice be you know, extracting a Moff Gideon that didn't that didn't quite seem uh quite didn't seem make sense. right yeah, yeah it didn't make uh, didn't make sense at all but yeah so when they get so to like, this part it's like oh snap these these guys are not just here this is their home ground zero base yeah for all and of this so <laughs> like oh the empire is here oh man um so that's uh that was a big moment um yeah to to realize that that the empire was had has a base there i mean and it's it's far along it is huge i mean yeah this was freaking badass okay. yeah this was the, this was like he goes dropping down slick armor yes yes this was so freaking cool and uh, my, of course, you know, the whole time he's um, Din Djarin. Okay, so they killed the other, I think there was four four um, Mandalorians mm -hmm. that were caught on the other side of the door. Yeah. And they killed the other two, but they didn't kill Din Djarin. Right. So they've, there's a question, why did they not kill Din Djarin? Mm -hmm. And which is probably because Moff Gideon says, you know, the guy all in silver, don't kill that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know what yeah. he plans on doing with Din Djarin. Better not touch a hair on his head. <laughs> like the last time we met, you kicked my ass. So, you know, I want to rematch. <laughs> well, I was surprised that he didn't take a cheap shot at him. Like, you know, a punch in the know. face or anything. Nothing. Um, but he was there to gloat. Look at that. Look at that face. <laughs> no. well, look at who we have here. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah, thought I was gone, didn't you? I'm I back, baby. Yeah. <laughs> See, we just needed it. more of this character. If they, if, and also if they kill him off in, in the 38 minutes next um, that we have, I just, I mean, I'm like, this is a guy you you got to cherish him. You've got to cherish. You got to let him uh, just squeeze as much as he can out of the season. Um, and and two episodes is just not enough. A uh, Moff Gideon for me, at least. I I need more. You know. Definitely for me, I'm like he's my favorite character in the whole <laughs> Mandalorian. I just love how charismatically freaking evil. Oh, yeah. You know that uh, <laughs> that he is. He's yeah. just like, yes, aren't I? Aren't I amazing? Before I uh, take all of your planet's resources. Yes, and so this is the scene that makes fills in a lot of blanks. So huge exposition dump here. But mm -hmm. who's telling the story? I mean, this is how you want the story to be told to you. 
uh, by this guy. Look at his face. <laughs> He's just like, yes. <laughs> um, and yes, he's he's there building his special army, his army. Mm -hmm. And it's a wonderful part about it is that he has decided to take a little bit of each of the cultures he's admiring. Mm -hmm. He's admiring the clones. He's admiring the um, the the Jedi. The and he's mm -hmm. admiring the Beskar um, uh, armor of the Mandalorians. And mm -hmm. he says, like, all of your cultures will live within me. It's just wonderful. Like, he's he knows what he's doing, you know. Uh, so we know about the Beskar uh, mm -hmm. armor that they are um, they are taking from the planet. That's why they don't want Mandalorians on the planet. They're they're stealing their resources this whole mm -hmm. time, you know. Ever since the the uh, tear the night of a thousand tears, the tears. Mm -hmm. he's been there sucking that planet dry. Now, one thing he also said about the Beskar armor is that it's made out of an a a Beskar alloy, so that means that it's not the pure be Beskar. It it is a like a form of it. So it, it, I mm -hmm. guess so he can you get more bang for his buck. With it. Yeah, it's basically metallurgy where they probably took the Beskar, um, combined it with either a different type of metal or mineral to make it stronger than the Beskar that the Mandalorian wear. Because that's just purely, you know, forged. It's like melted down from mm -hmm. the best i guess from the best or ore that they have and that's how they do it mm -hmm. but what they what he did or i guess you know what the uh guess what his scientists or whoever have done is made it alloy with a different kind of metal to change its physical properties mm -hmm. and still get the benefits of it um and uh he's the thing i want to know is that okay cloning uh, for his army. Mm -hmm. So his army is going to be made out of clones. Yes. Which clones is the question. That was the question that I, that uh, I'd heard bantered around. Somebody thought that it might be clones. I think of like a Snoke or something mm -hmm. like that, but it's, it's somebody cause you see the cryo chambers and mm -hmm. they're just like, who, who's in know, there? <laughs> who's in it? Yeah, yeah it's like yeah. who's in there, and that's the questions that we were asking um, in season one. Like, yeah. who, you know, who is it? So by the time you have the clones, whatever dimension from the Jedi that they decided to use, and of course the Beskar, which is used to come up with the dark troopers. So they are pretty freaking badass coming. Oh out yeah, this this is what tripped me out when you saw just how embedded. They were with yeah. like all of the fighters that they had, and all of this is this is basically like a recreation of part of a, one of the um, Imperial Star Cruisers. Oh yeah, that they had. Which brings me to the other question: It's obvious they've been there for quite some time. Oh, yeah. Do you think? And again, this is adding more ammo um, against the armor. She's the one who kept telling them not to go there. Yeah, that's exactly. I mean, that's exactly what I'm I'm seeing is that she's like, oh yeah, don't go. The planet is poisonous. No, you, you we can't go there. You, you know, um, and there's no way for you to take off your helmet. You have to go uh, to the 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 poisonous planet in order to reveal uh, redeem yourself. Yes, and the waters of Lake Minnetonka. <laughs> yeah, and it's like. <laughs> Did he really have to do that? Uh, I'm I'm just thinking that she's been working with with Moth this whole time. Now there's another tip off as to why they may be linked, and they and they've been uh, comparing the fact that uh, Moth's helmet has horns on it like she does. Ooh. Yeah. I didn't notice. You know, I uh -huh. didn't put those two into together. Yeah, uh, and so they're thinking. Uh, th that they may be um, linked together. Um, 
And uh, there, there's, there's another thing that I, okay. So before we got to this part, mm -hmm. Axe Wolves is fighting and he goes, oh, let me go and get some reinforcements. And so there's a, there's a little space in the uh, rock ahead and mm -hmm. Paz Vizsla says, okay, let me, let me carve you out um, a little bit of um, um, cover so you can mm -hmm. get up. He leaves. He doesn't make it to this part of the, the battle. So he mm -hmm. doesn't, he's not a part of this part at all. And um, if you remember in the, uh, on the ship, when just about when they're about to um, jump and they see the mm -hmm. planet, um, you know, Paz says, oh, we, I didn't, it's, it's, it's worse than we thought. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, Axe Wolves says, oh yeah, I saw it when it happened. And I'm like, where did you see it happen? Were you on the ship that bombed the place? You know, mm -hmm. so it, it, it he's uh, he's a, a, a suspect as well, uh, because, you know, uh, he's been away from uh, the uh, he's been away from boat for a while and mm -hmm. he was quick to be, you know, to be the leader um, and lead them away to do, you know, dumb things, you know, <laughs> for money. Right, dumb things for money, and right. so, like, and keeping them scattered, basically. Yes. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if he is part of the thing. They could, it could be all of them, and it could be just one. But um, they, a lot of people are suspicious as as can be. And you know what? I'm here for it. I'm here for all of the suspects. You know, I'm like, yes, okay. We got a story finally, and we've got. Um, some, you know, people to be suspicious of. And it, it's just, uh, that's what we've been asking for since season, uh, episode one. We've been asking mm -hmm. for this. Um, so yeah, it, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving who, who I'm done it. it. It's a who done it case, right? It's like, it's, who's a mole? Exactly. The who, yeah. the who done it. You yeah. want to find out if it's truly the butler who, uh, <laughs> who did it. And it's like, you look guilty. Well, I only look guilty because this person is actually the one who did it, you know? And that's, that's, that's what, that's what intrigues us. The need yeah. to know. And there wasn't really that urgency, you know, before, but of course, Bo-Katan gets the uh, dark saber. And they're just like, yeah, we're punching our way uh, out of here. I, I love the fact that he goes, uh, we got to stop meeting like this. Yeah. <laughs> Like you dirty like dog, this. you Bo Katan Crees. <laughs> he sounds like a Bond villain when he says that, yes, you know. I love it. it was Everything great. with him in this scene is just so amazing. Uh hilarious and just wonderful job. Wonderful job. And of course, Paz Visla with oh, the big yeah. guns. I mean Yeah. He's like, I'll cover you. And you pretty much knew right then and there uh, he was not going to make it. Yeah. I I mean, don't, he, I, oh, sorry, Dad, but oh, 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 yeah, he almost did, though. He almost did because he, he got rid of all the troopers. Um, uh, and it, it was it was almost <sighs> home free until. I love this shot. Yeah. It's just like he's. Basically, it's overheated. He's out of ammo. He gets rid of the dark troopers. But these guys. You don't mess with them. You don't mess with them. And they are next level. And again, I have to say, I love seeing these guys again. Because in um, Return of the Jedi... When Emperor, Emperor Palpatine arrives, oh sure, yeah, and you see that these guards are around him, they're like, ah, oh, shoot, these dudes have nobody <laughs> to mess with. And then you see these staffs; they they are no one to mess with. And no. it was brutal as, the way they took him down. It was brutal how they took him out because he had no chance. I yeah. mean, none. They just. Yeah. 
it, it was it was a little hard to watch, you know, but at the same time, I was like, um, I didn't have as I, I like the character a lot. I really mm -hmm. do. Um, I felt like even this season with his character, mm -hmm. we should have gotten a little more development. So right about this time, we would be bawling. Like, yes. I, I, like I should be bawling. Like, um, I'm, I'm more like, oh no, but yeah. instead of like, oh, <laughs> you know, die, like boogers coming out of my nose and I'm just like, <laughs> no, no, not this, not this one, not this guy, <laughs> you know? It's like, it's the difference between like saying Star Trek, it's a difference between, you know, some red shirt getting shanked and like say it happening to Spock or Kirk. Oh yeah. Or somebody like that. It's this is a scene where we should be just like tearing up. You know, you hear that classic sad opera music. Yeah. And you're just like, oh my God, he's not gonna make it. He's not gonna make it. Dude just yeah. sacrifice himself for everybody else. But because his character hasn't really been that developed, we don't we don't feel anything. Like I feel more for the Imperial um for the uh, Praetorian guard here taking this guy out than I do for Paz Visla. Yeah. So that tells me that in a way, this is a waste of a scene because a character death like this, the person who stays behind and gets slaughtered in order to save all the others is usually someone you didn't expect, but you've seen their character grow, like someone who was always scared to the person who's just like, no, I'm going to do this one thing right in, yeah. you know, in my life. And you feel that sacrifice. Exactly. I didn't really feel this as, as a sacrifice. And it's, it's a, uh, it's a shame. Yeah, it, it really is. And it was completely unnecessary for them mm. to kill Paz Vizla. There's still a lot you could have done with this character. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it wasn't, um, you know, I, I think it wasn't really the end, um, didn't feel like the end of the character. And it's very interesting that this character is, um, John Favreau's is doing the voice to, to the char character and is linked to John, John Favreau. Um, um. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm, I'm being interrupted. I'm being interrupted. Oh, I'm no, interrupted. no, no, that's fine. I was, uh, I was like, oh, she can't say something juicy. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I kind of, I kind of was. Um, at least I, I, I thought it was. I find it interesting that out of all of them, this Paz Visla is the one who they sacrificed. And I know mm -hmm. we've been talking a lot about the inconsistencies between season one and the other two seasons. Mm -hmm. And I almost find to feel like this is a way of John Favreau basically saying goodbye. You, you got it. <laughs> That's exactly what I was gonna say. He's done. This is it. He's completely, completely he's done. done. Yeah, he's done. It's not a, a, an accident that his character is is being killed off um, mm -hmm. of his own of his own series that he pretty much. Um, created and um, it, it, it's almost as if he has lost the uh, agency over his own creation and yeah. and, I, and 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 so there this is the death of uh, his in, not, not his involvement I'm sure he's going to be involved in other things but it's it's just the death of it almost um, is symbolized in a scene mm -hmm. um, and it, the the way it's brutally done, it this this tells me something. This tells me something without telling me um, everything. Um, yeah, I don't want to say that it's exactly the same thing, but it's kind of like how in Game of Thrones, the Red Wedding. I don't know if you've I don't know if you watched. I the, yeah I I think. I think I know what you're talking about because the, I don't. I didn't watch the show, but I, 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 I happened to see clips of the red wedding. Yeah, they pretty much just wiped 
out everybody that yeah uh, they they got everybody that didn't was matter there. if you were <laughs> did didn't matter you guess what you were start guess what we're gonna you know we're gonna we're gonna take you we're gonna take you out maybe that wasn't the best best analogy but just um how he went out and the fact that these guards just basically ran him through it's like he didn't even put up a fight or anything it just just to me i just feel that he's just checked out because yeah. the first season it was such a labor of of love to him mm -hmm. you can see it and too. and it was just in everything and all the characters the development all of that and then seasons two you can see season two seem to just spin off other shows losing control yeah losing control having too many you know other people pushing in um to the uh to the you know to the show and it's kind of like okay i just it's kind of like when you're at a job that you absolutely can't stand or one that you're planning to leave and you mm -hmm. emotionally check out and yeah. you let things go that you wouldn't normally let go because you don't you don't love it enough anymore to hate what's going on and i'm thinking favro was is or at the point of this year was at that point and yeah uh, this was deliberate a deliberate i think so job. absolutely yeah. uh if you cannot read through the lines right it's right yeah it's right there it's right there and look um we don't know like the details and mm -hmm. but we can feel the um uh, the problems with the in the series and what it it's telling us uh the definite tone difference between the first season the second season and the third season and mm -hmm. all these other like even book of boba book of, uh, book of boba fett like how these are are emotionally uh talking to us as fans mm -hmm. who are watching this we are we are not just consuming um a, a story here there, there's more to it that's happening behind the scenes that's being revealed um also on screen and sometimes uh you know we're we don't always love it but this couldn't be more like uh like direct if you ask me why kill off this <laughs> character why he has no there's okay to raise the stakes uh yet they, they killed a lot of other people uh, yeah you know uh well, why him uh you know this is a man who has a child i mean we know he mm -hmm. has a child and and a lot of people have raised concerns like what's going to happen to that child some people have raised concerns here we have a a father who is uh, is being slaughtered pretty mm -hmm. much and and that is not you know you know uh, young men need to have um you know a father figure and here we, we're slaughtering a, a good one right there and so and and we're hoping that next episode is not an, another slaughter of another dad on the show you know what i mean yeah that would really send a very bad message so I, 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 it's hard to watch mistakes happen but this again this didn't need to happen no um, but um we're here <laughs> we're here <laughs> it's like yeah we uh yeah yeah that just didn't i mean just, just walk off like just the, like watch the, off and just how he just slowly fell for it was it was just agonizing yeah yeah and it, just, it's, and and that was basically the episode yeah and 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 what that clip just before that was directed by um or is it written by was it written by um uh, uh, created so by created, created by, by this, John this is interesting let's call yeah. it so it's created by okay John Favreau. and so these executive producer he's not even in the producer credits Wait, he's not yeah he's not even in the pretty used to be hmm. that he was the producer yeah, they've not he's he's not he's not the producer. They just gave him 
creator credits. I would, you know what? In in like ten years, I want to hear. I want him to sit down and write his uh, autobiography about this. <laughs> I would have to agree because if you go if you go on Disney Plus and you watch, um, there's this like the sign behind the scenes thing that they did for the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Um, you will see just how they t- how he talks about uh, the Mandalorian and his love for Star Wars. Number one, oh, and he wow. talks about that, and he talks about how he came up with the idea that it was supposed to be like a space western. You know how like you know how those western yeah. scenarios like each episode was um, like self contained like. Who is, you know, who is this masked, you know, this masked man? And you go on these adventures, you know, kind mm-hmm. of like, you know, Kung Fu when Kane would go to, you know, a, a different, different place, place. Yeah. every, you know, every episode. And he would talk about growing up watching Star Wars and just how he wanted to bring, you know, bring that to life and just how happy and excited, you know, that, uh, that he was. Wow. And then, you know, by the, um, not by the end of season. Just talking about that, and along with like Rick Famuyiwa, who he also watched it, and he was talking about watching, you know, Star Wars with the, you know his dad taking him to go see The Empire Strikes Back, and there was mm. so much hope um, about that. I'm like flipping through IMDb. Let me share this episode. He kept talking about that, and you could see how happy you know he he was, but. All yeah, of he, that has changed. It's it, well, you know, I I actually watched some of the footage of him and um, uh, Dave Filoni at the uh, uh, Star Wars celebration, and mm-hmm. um, I he's he was there, you know, and um, he spoke fondly of everybody. He's very polite and um, and and everything, but there there was like. Um, I didn't, I didn't feel like, uh, I'm probably reading way too much into his, his body language. Oh, no, go ahead. Body language says a lot. Um, I just, body language says a lot to us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all we've got sometimes. Um, but I, I, I just, uh, hope that, um, we get more content from him directly, um, because he's such a talented person. Uh, mm-hmm. And I really hate that, you know, that uh, the Mandalorian kind of went off into this other kind of gear, you know. Uh, I, I, like I said, we, we may have to, um, to, to accept the fact that uh, he... Um, okay, he is executive. Oh, here's the executive producer. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. I guess uh, it, just moved the frame. We may have to accept the fact that you know they, there may be some more entanglements uh, of other series that are going on with man the Mandalorian. They it did what it needed to do, which was put Star Wars back on any kind of map it could find itself on, mm-hmm. and then they deconstructed that. They <laughs> it's like how do you do that? <laughs> It was just like the Mandalorian was this, you know, the first season, it was, you know, it was such an awesome thing. And then the surprise that we had in the end of having Luke Skywalker show up, that was like mind blowing. And then season two, it seemed like its only existence was to spin off Ashoka, Mm -hmm. um, the book of Boba Fett and eventually you know kenobi and it seemed like that's all that it was doing and you saw like less focus on din Djarin and what his next adventure was going to be and i i really wish they brought cobb vanth back again oh yeah lo- oh, my God, oh with character. timothy oliphant i freaking yeah. love that i love uh, that that was that was so good i had never seen him in anything until i saw him and then i'm like who who that <laughs> oh, you gotta watch Justify. Never mm. watched it. No, I never saw that. So I, I, must, I must watch it now. Um, yes. But yeah, he, I was. There was a lot of 
there's a lot of cool stuff that happened in ep- uh, in this first season and i'm i'm actually mm-hmm. going to rewatch it um for the heck of it because just to recapture that feeling of that first season yeah. I mean, because it was so good. It was so good. Um, And it it seemed like the second season, they blew up the Razor Crest. Yes. It it was like they were taking the Mandalorian apart. Mm -hmm. They they, they had begun doing that. They had begun deconstructing him. Mm -hmm. They took his his ship away from him. Um, And before that, was the Ahsoka part, right? Where she was um, introduced to the story, right? Was she introduced to, uh, where she, she was in the was... woods and she, yeah, she, that, yeah. that, that was the Ahsoka story just before the, the next one where they blew up his razor crest. Mm-hmm. And it's like, so they started like, like moving things around and deconstructing um, uh, Mando to the point where, oh yeah, the Mandalorian show is not really all about the same guy, guys. It's no. really about all the Mandalorians. It could be and anybody. I'm, I'm like, I don't, it's it's almost like an insult to the viewer for them to say that because that is not how this started out. It's yeah. the Mandalorian, not a Mandalorian. Yeah. But and, you know. To say that we're haters because we're saying, where's the story we liked? Uh, uh, where's the story at all? It is really um, like the knee jerk reaction I'm always hearing now. Like, oh, you don't like anything Star Wars or you just want to make pick apart Star Wars. No, we're, we're, we love Star Wars. We think that it could be greater. And um, we did see something incredible in the first season of um, The Mandalorian. And we've seen the quality go south in order to create other shows. Uh, And what other shows are we talking about? All these jumping off shows. We got uh, Book of Boba Fett. We've got uh, Ahsoka. We've got, got, uh, you know... Uh, all these other things that are, are happening. I don't know if there is there another show that, that's coming off this. Um, Ahsoka, um, I think Ashoka is a summer. Then Ashoka's there's uh, summer. there's a movie that they're going to do, which is supposed to tie up everything in yeah. the Mandalorian. Baloney's doing it, which means yeah. most of it would probably be Ashoka that's, uh, <laughs> that's in it. And then I think there's season two of. Um, and or which I am not interested in because it shouldn't take three episodes for you to actually get me interested in what's good and what's going on. But it's just not my cup of my cup of tea. It's not bad, um, but it's I just not understand. to my preference. But I will definitely say the writing for and or for what I've been hearing has definitely been better than The Mandalorian. But there's just too many fans like myself who are just like, you know what, I'm not. I'm not interested and I see what's going on and what's happened to the Mandalorian. And it's not that it's like, oh, we don't like anything or, oh, you're just haters. It's like, no, we're used to a certain level of quality. Yeah. It's just like if you're used to getting steak and somebody gives you, you know, a McDonald's hamburger. That's... You can't, you can't do that. You can't say like, hey guys, this is a filet mignon. We are going to have the biggest, you know, piece. It's going to go, you know, on a huge, huge plate. And then you give somebody a small thing and it's a hamburger at, yet at that. It's like that, there's a huge difference between uh, one thing over another. Mm-hmm. And there, this, I, do, I hope it doesn't get to be um because I, I really do love the character of Bo-Katan and 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 I do want to watch what her story you know you know more of her story but I, I, again uh if we have to say hey I would like to see a spin-off movie with uh, or a spin-off show of just mm-hmm. Din Djarin and Grogu from The Mandalorian because it's been taken over by other characters mm-hmm. like when you know uh why are we doing that why don't we just spin off uh, a bo-katan show and you know even if grogu has got to stay with her for for a year or two you know what i mean mm-hmm. why is it that we're 
um, were abandoning this character of Din Djarin. Like, it, I thought, I, I, I think there's a lot more stories that you can tell across this huge galaxy. Um, mm -hmm. and, and they're just, they're leaving, um, you know, these stories on the floor, basically. They're just walking away from it. Um, to, yeah. And uh, I don't know if it's a money grab, it's like, or what, it, usually it's about money, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't know why uh, in the characters being abandoned. It, 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 it behooves me and I don't think it's a nice thing for to, to say, Hey, look, you became attached to a character and mm -hmm. now you're a bad person because you like the character and you want to see more of the character, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, yeah, and, and I, and I get you on that because I didn't know anything about the Mandalorians. So I thought I was going to get to watch a show that would introduce me to who they were, mm -hmm. what their, you know, what their mythology was, how they move through the galaxy. That's what I thought that I was going to, or that I was going to get. But instead of the first season, they start concentrating on all the other characters, bringing back Boba Fett, which really pissed me off. It's just like, why are you bringing him into, yeah. you know, into the Mandalorian? It doesn't, it doesn't make a, it doesn't make sense. So like you were saying, Retro Nerd Girl, they have literally abandoned developing Din Djarin as a character. I like Bo-Katan. It's like, it's very possible to develop both of those characters. Yes. But Absolutely. it's like they're going after the shiny thing and they're forgetting about who the show is about. And I think that that is the reason why a lot of people have stopped watching, not just Star Wars fans, but normies who are like, I thought I was here to learn about the Mandalorian. Yeah. Yeah. Why should I keep watching if you're not going to, you know, do things or yeah. have episodes centered around, you know, around the Mandalorian? So it's like, if you claim that you just want to bring in new Star Wars fans or whatever, even your normies, just like your show isn't even about what your show is supposed to be about. Like, yeah. Book of Boba Fett wasn't really about Boba Fett. And I think that's why they went towards the gimmick of having... Lizzo and Jack Black and Christopher Lloyd and Tim Meadows mm -hmm. in yeah. this series because it was like, okay, we gotta get we gotta get seats in the theater, so to speak. You know, we we gotta get these people uh, to watch the show for these celebrities, and that's never been what Star Wars has been about. It's never been about celebrities. It's always been about the story, and even though like it. it the best of Star Wars is about keeping that story straight. The worst of stories is completely mm -hmm. doing <laughs> whatever you want and, and using Star Wars as your, your, your intro. Um, and uh, this, uh, you know, it's a shame that that happened to this, um, this season, you know, to this show. Yeah. It's... And, yeah. It, 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 it irritates me um, in a way because I was so, you know, I'm going on a little bit. Um, okay. I was so pissed off by The Last Jedi, I refused to watch Ooh. Rise of Skywalker or Rise of Palpatine. I have not watched it um, <laughs> at all. I was that pissed off by The Last of The Last Jedi. And The Mandalorian actually made me want to get interested in you know in star wars again and like i said mm -hmm. i loved the first season loved the writing loved the oh, intrigue so loved all the characters and then second season it was just like it was a carcass getting picked at which you know was really upsetting to me it's like okay what well, this if it's not about the mandalorian why am i here yeah no, really, i mean why, they, why am i here watching yeah i mean it, it, it's it's it, now the second season for me wasn't as bad, um, uh, but it, that's where the damage began, started to rear its mm -hmm. head, right? Um, yeah. And uh, there were some really amazing uh, moments. I mean, a high point for me uh, was definitely the scene where Din Djarin had to remove his um, helmet. That episode was incredible. 
um, from the from beginning to end and having that call back even though I'm not a, the best fan of Bill Burr being um, you know a celebrity yeah. growing up in <laughs> yeah. he, did a, he did a great job though he playing did. that part and also that was all done very well the action the pacing mm -hmm. and it set up so many great things it's one of the best episodes of, of season two and um uh, you know it, it when we're starting to get to this one even the ahsoka we learn new things about grogu we learned his name we we mm -hmm. learned more information but then it was like okay we need a showstopper Right. And it's like, okay, that's where things are getting to be really messy because you bring Luke into the picture. Well, guys, Grogu can't stay with Luke because the school, if we, you know, remember, it, it goes down in flames. So that would mean that Grogu would die if he stays with Luke. So he's going to somehow you've got to write Grogu out of Luke's hands mm -hmm. at some point because he can't stay with him. If he, I mean, he could stay with him right. and die, but you know, we, my, people were already on the internet. Is he going to die? <laughs> like, are they going to, are they going to bump him off at the end? At this point, all bets are off. It, it was sad in me, but it wouldn't surprise me if, uh, yeah. if they killed off Din Djarin, if he winds up doing some Leroy Jenkins type of thing and, you know, yeah, they just wanted because I, I would hate for that to happen because we've already seen a needless death when yes. it came to Paz Visla, and I, I really, I, I don't want that um, repeated. Uh, well, I at mean, all. in in the geek sphere or the nerdist uh, fear, a lot of people are thinking um, there's there's a lot of speculation that that could be the case uh, mm. that that Din Djarin might not make it. Um, another thing that's really interesting, which actually supports the idea that maybe the armor is doing uh, something. Emily Swallow, the, the actress who plays um, uh, uh, the armor was doing an interview and she was extremely excited about this last episode hmm. and I was like huh it, is she as an actress she's very excited about this last episode does that mean that she gets to have a bigger you know piece of the action in this in this uh, episode so um, you know my my thoughts are trying to decode everything and trying to figure mm -hmm. out like what did she mean by that you know um, so so there's a possibility that she really, you know, could be one of the, um, you know, it, you know, scene stealing, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, bad guys at the at the end of uh, this uh, whole ordeal, mm -hmm. which would be interesting. Finally, we get some answers. Some something has to give um, because we we've been holding out for for so long for any kind of juicy information and right to load it up in the last two episodes it's just um uh, it's, it's, not, it's not good it's you know and like i said it's like they did it in season two and uh it looks like they're gonna try and do it again in season three huh well for folks you're going to have to wait until next week <laughs> when we break down the final episode. Yeah. And uh, I'll just say this. If you see me with a glass of wine. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're going to have to we're going to have to talk about this. Well, first of all, thank you so much, Retro Nerd Girl, for hanging out with me oh, for yes. doing this uh, deep this dive and review. Going to ask you on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate the spies? Ah, I'm gonna give it a really high score. Mm, I um, it wasn't. I was okay just for this episode. Okay, not considering the rest of the season because that that's another score altogether. Mm 
I would I would give that the, the entire season a five. Um, but this episode, I really enjoyed the pacing and everything that was going on with it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I am going to give it a record uh, 10. I'm going to give it a 10. Because I, I really felt like wow. this should have been this should have been the way every episode went from mm -hmm. from the jump. Like we should have gotten this level of quality, this level of storytelling, this level of intensity and tension right from the beginning. And so um, if they had done that, they would have, you know, they would have kept more customers. Um they would have kept more views and um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I know it's a ten. It's a it's a bit much. It's a, a little extra, but it was it was for doing it and and doing it well. Um, there may have been some things I was very critical about, but ultimately I, I was um, some things oh, superseded my expectation. Like uh, Moff Gideon and really saved this for me and gave and made took it way 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 over the edge for me. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Well, folks, let's see. I am uh, I'm a little salty, uh, but <laughs> I will give this episode a nine. And wow. the reason why I'm giving it, originally I was going to give it an 8.5. The reason why I'm giving it a nine is because Moff Gideon is back. That's pretty much it. Yes. If it was not for Giancarlo yeah. Esposito and the gravitas with his <laughs> acting that just gives you like I said, he's he's a Vader fanboy, but he pulls it off so freaking well. <laughs> like yeah. You know that I love it. How he bounces off of everybody. His intrigue. How he truly plays a invincible villain. He sells oh, yeah. that to you and we just, you know, and we just buy it. The fact that the episode, even though, yes, there's a lot of exposition shoved into that first scene, you have a conflict. You have a reason for the episode existing. Mm -hmm, you have a mm -hmm. sense of urgency that's going on. You have these situations where is the armor suspect or is she not suspect? I or love what's that. What's going on? And, <laughs> You know, everyone's gathered in Mandalore and all of a sudden they got this freaking base that's, you know, that's on there. And the Empire is back. And that whole Shadow Council, that whole oh, Shadow that was... scene was good. Now, if Andor was written that way in the first place, first couple of episodes, I would have stuck around. But, it <laughs> but I did love that Shadow Council scene. It's very obvious that with this episode, they paid much more attention to trying to tie up the loose ends, although my big ding, and this is why it's been knocked down to uh, to a nine, a lot of these things should have been established earlier on in the yeah. season to give us breadcrumbs to keep our attention to watch because there's no secret viewership for The Mandalorian is way down from mm -hmm. what it used to be. And it really is Lucasfilm's fault because all those things that intrigued us from season one started to slip away in season two and were basically non-existent in the beginning of season uh, season three. So you have that. Um, I don't like how Paz Vizsla was taken out. It's um, It was senseless. And I do feel like it was an allegory for uh, mm -hmm. for John Favreau. Um, it was very obvious. Uh, did not uh, didn't like that, and it didn't need to be uh, done that way. But nevertheless, uh, nevertheless, they did it. Uh, good Mandalorian uh, culture revelation. You know the more cultured Mandalorians versus the Mandalorian rednecks, AKA children of the watch. That was actually kind of funny. Um, <laughs> Grogu and the exoskeleton funny did not like that. It was basically a force of IG 11. I don't like what they did with him. So I took points off for that too, but for the season overall, um, I like this episode uh, the best. Um, Granted, the season has not been the best. I got lots okay. of issues with this season. But in isolation, this was definitely my favorite episode um, of the season. So yeah. 
we'll see what happens with the last remaining episode. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Well, folks, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We like to get into the nitty gritty and the guts and the details of doing these reviews. And especially for those of you who are just like, I'm not watching The Mandalorian, but I'm watching your breakdown oh. and reviews of the episodes. <laughs> Both of us, Retro Nerd Girl and I, we thank the heck out of you guys for uh, enjoying us falling on a grenade for you. So, <laughs> yeah. So, Retro Nerd Girl, please tell the folks where they can find you. You can find me on uh, YouTube at RetroNerdGirl.com and at Twitter. All right, all right. And of course, you can find me on YouTube, on Twitter, on Twitch, and on Instagram all under Lorena Creel. So thanks again, you guys, for hanging out here with us. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.